by uh, Damascus Television and uh, the grand the head uh, religious figure in Syria. After a while, we got to know each other. We were speaking in Arabic. So I asked him, how come Abraham Abinu is buried with Sarah, not with Hagar? Hagar is their mother. He's buried in his hawk, not with Ishmael. Good question. <laughs> I didn't get a good answer, but all right. You're lucky you came out alive. Huh? You're lucky you came out alive. <laughs> <laughs> Took a while for me to get the guts. Right. I'll show you pictures. Yeah. So, anyway, he says Sarah didn't get along. Hagar, Hagar went to Mecca. Okay. Whatever. <laughs> anyway, listen to this story. Story. I read this. this is coming weeks back. We read it on Rosh Hashanah. Rosh Hashanah, that awesome day. Every person has to hear this story. Hagar was a daughter of Paro. She was a princess. She lived in a palace. She had many maids and many, and many slaves. And uh, she goes to, she said, I'd rather be a maid in Abraham's house than be a princess in my father's house. Wonderful. There was no one. And Sarah couldn't have children. She told Abraham marry her. Abraham doesn't marry just any girl. Okay. Now Sarah doesn't like what she's doing. Her son Ishmael. She says, throw her out. Abraham doesn't like the idea. Hashem says to Sarah, whatever. And he says, Abraham, whatever your wife says, listen. This is a favorite pesuk of all women. Call Hashem, my wife is listening. Call Hashem, Tomar, Elecha, Sarah, Shmat, whatever your wife says, listen. Okay, okay. He listens. He throws her out. The kid was sick. She had to carry him on her shoulders. The princess. And now she's lost in the desert, and he's, de he's dying from thirst, a terrible death, where your stomach blows up, the Pesuk and Echad describes it. And, um, and she goes from the distance, she doesn't want, him, doesn't want to see her son dying, and she's crying. And an angel comes to Hagar, you read this on Rosh Hashanah, and he says, Malach Hagar, what's the problem, Hagar? If I was Hagar, I would slap the angel on his face. <laughs> What's the problem? What's not the problem? What's the problem? What's the problem? I was a princess. I gave up the palace. I became a maid. Sarah threw me out. Abraham threw me out. God threw me out. Everything is wrong. My son is dying. What's the problem? What's the problem? <laughs> what do you mean, what's the problem? And the message is to me and you on Rosh Hashanah. What's the problem? What's the problem? What's the problem? You don't think God runs the world? You don't think God loves you? And if you have a problem, this is exactly what you need? What's the problem? Where is your betahon? Where is your faith? Where is your faith? God loves you. This is exactly what you need right now. But not only that. God opened up her eyes and she saw a well of water. It doesn't say God created a well of water. <coughs> You're crying, your son is dying, your thirst is a well of water right there. It's not just a story then. That's in every case. So whenever there's a problem, you have a problem with a child, what am I going to do with this child? Not doing well in school. Nobody can help them. God created the solution. Just ask him, show me where it is. <coughs> Why are you crying? Why are you complaining? What are you complaining? What's the problem? He's dying from thirst. There's a well of water right there. What's the problem, Hagar? But not only that, this was the best thing that ever happened to her. If she wasn't thrown out of, the of, her, of her husband's house, of her mom's house, she would have been terrible. She was thrown out. Ishmael repented. The Teshuvah, and Abraham took her back, and he had another six children with her. You think it's bad? She got thrown out. It's the best thing in the world. The best thing that happened to her. What's the problem? What's the problem? And the Midrash says further, she went and she filled up her bottle with water, and our rabbis say, our rabbis say that. Uh, 
She's Maketane Amash and have enough faith. What are you filling up your bottle of water? She's in the desert. Her son almost died. Finally, she found a well of water. She filled up water so she can continue on her trip. Nah. If God gave you a well of water here, you're going to need another well of water. I got a Maketane Amash and have enough faith. So if you see a problem, a situation, just fasten your seatbelt. Fasten your seatbelt. If you're driving on a highway and there are no turns, you're going to speed, you're going to get killed. Or God forbid, you're going to fall asleep on the wheel. God gives you turns and twists, but he shows you and he creates a solution. Easy to talk about Hagar and Rahel and Yaakov, talk about your life. And look at Hashem and say, I love you, Hashem. Thank you for the problem. I'm going to use it to grow and to get closer to you. The Pesuk in, uh, in Halel, we say, Odech, what do we say? We say that, Ahavti ki yishma Hashem, I'm so happy when God listens to my prayers. So what Hasidic Rabbi says, you like it when God listens to your prayers, of course, who doesn't like it when God? Ahavti ki yishma Hashem, he accepts my, my voice and my, my begging. And he says another thought. I love it when he keeps me begging where he doesn't give me what I need. And he keeps me pleading and crying, God, help! Because if God hates you, he doesn't hate any of us. He'll give you whatever you want. The Gemara says there was a rabbi, Shmuel Katan, who made a, who made a fast day. Because there was a drought, there was no rain. He declared a fast day. So you fast from the morning star, 72 minutes before sunrise until nightfall. And um, before the morning star, it started raining. And the people said, our Rebbe is a tzaddik. Ooh, that's wonderful. We don't even have to fast. And Shmuel Katan was very upset. Then God says, don't fast, don't pray, leave me alone. Take the rain, go away. So I have to kishma Hashem et kolita Hanunai means I love it when I get what I want right away because now I can cry and I can plead and I can hug Hashem and I can plead with them and I can become a better person and I can grow from this experience. I have to kishma Hashem et kolita Hanunai. Any questions? Oh, what silence? What? <laughs> Could you illustrate it with some <coughs> real, um, more current stories? Okay, I think I want. Something a hundred years ago is good? <laughs> yeah? I saw, a oh, I, saw, I saw a story a year ago. Uh, that's in a, in, a, in, a, in a newspaper. I've, I've had my personal stories. I've had my personal stories. I have a fellow who lives in Lakewood. I didn't live in Lakewood. I was living in Brooklyn. He was the son of a very, very wealthy individual, the only son, who ran the business of his father. And he tells me he wants to learn the subject of reliance on God. So I gave him my notes and my files. I said, let's study together. We studied together. I said, ask for something. Don't make it too easy, but don't make it an open miracle. I really, really believe you're going to get it, and you'll get it. So he comes to me back, maybe a few months later. He says, Rabbi, I got what I asked for. Not only I got what I asked for, I got twice as much. So you don't have to tell me, but I, I would enjoy listening to hearing. He says his father is one of the most famous designers in the country and he wanted to learn Torah half a day, not to work in a business all day. And his father says, impossible, you're my only son. No way. And they were fighting and fighting and fighting. Okay. I told him this, have faith, pray to God, <coughs> prayer and betahan go together, do it. So. What happened? Without fighting, without arguing, he finished the Gemara, he was making a siyum, his father was invited, and he spoke at the siyum. His father looks at him, he says, if you can speak like this, you have no business working. I want you to learn full time. 
He got twice as white ones. He's a neighbor of mine and the rest is history. Just uh, want to hear more stories? Tell me what you want. Whatever I may discuss. Okay, people, people have some questions. Any it, questions? It's a very intriguing um, notion to, to be in such a predicament like you described with Hagar. And does it work for anybody? Or maybe Hagar, you know, she was in the house of Avram. It works for everybody. Try it. Try it and call me. <laughs> Try it and call me. 